Hello everyone, and welcome to another exciting oil painting video. Uh, this is Sunday, March 10th. It's actually a little chilly outside, 46 degrees, but uh, the wind is what makes it chilly. Otherwise, it's sunny and beautiful. And considering it's the Midwest near Chicago and it's 46 degrees on a March 10th day, I'll take it. Anyways, we got our nice 12 by 16 canvas. We've got our oil paint. We've got our medium. I'm going to pour just a little bit on there. we got our big mouth bird, Quaker parrot that thinks he's a bigger parrot. It's funny, he hasn't said a word all day. As soon as I started the video camera, he went crazy. So, what we're going to do, I usually start with the two-inch flat brush or the one-inch. I'm just going to use a filbert today. A little bit of sap green, a little bit of Haynes Gray, and we're just going to go in. Now, I got an idea today, it's like I usually don't when I'm painting, but I got an idea what I'm looking for today. I want to do a forest with uh, leafy trees, deciduous trees, but I'm going to do the foliage totally different than what I've been doing. I'm going to use the palette knife for the foliage, okay? It's going to give some real nice, cool effects. It's going to give the leaves like a little bit of a movement, stuff like that. So we're going to... Do what we normally do. Okay, you got that mixture that, I mean, it's a beautiful color, isn't it? Let's see, I'm gonna go like that. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna go waterfall right over there. Right there. Not a very big one. There we go. A little bit more of the Paints gray in that. Have that go off a little bit. Um, once I add the white to it, that's going to go away. You're going to see it better, so that's not a big deal. Add a little bit of Van Dyke brown to this mixture. Might put some rocks in here. Maybe a little hill here. I'm not sure yet. I think I'm gonna have mostly trees. Okay. Here we go. And then I'll put a little bit more tree in here, a little bit of brown in there, see how that works? And we have these come up big. So these are gonna be background trees, these are gonna be foreground trees. And that I just came up with as we're doing it. Normally I would put some kind of a wall here. Not today. We're gonna make this whole thing a really good forest. Okay. Now I showed you a few different ways I make trees with the deciduous deciduous trees. God, say that fast five times. Um, where I tap them in with a filbert, I tap them in with a fan brush. I tap them in with a two inch, whatever the case may be, whatever's over there. And there, I think I put a little bit of wall there. So these are up here. It's going to be some grass area. I'm not far, sure how far up I'm going to put the, um, the uh, rocks. Um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the Far River Bank. Wow, losing my train of thought here. I'll put a little bit of rocks here, here, maybe a couple little things here and there. Nothing big, you know, just maybe some slabs, like you'd see it at like a little state park or something in uh, Illinois, you know, little things like this or something. You know, not big mountains or bluffs or anything like that. I might have a couple, you know, little rocks here like that. You know, something to that effect. The big thing I want is the waterfalls coming out of there. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'll make this water in the back coming down. I was gonna make this grass and then have this come out, but that'll be water. And then it'll be like it's coming from the outside. You can't see where the water originates from. This'll be a pool. It goes right over the edge right there. And then our main waterfall into our main river.
There you go. Bingo. That'll work. Okay. So, I'm going to wipe that brush. And I'm going to... Actually, I will. I'll wipe the brush, but I'm not going to wash it. Or should I? Yep, I'm going to wash it. I usually don't wash brushes this quickly in, but I'm going to use the same brush to put the sky in right now. And even though I've got a lot of colors that I want in the sky, paint gray and the um, sap green a little bit, I've got a little bit of brown in there too. I don't want that in this particular sky. So I'm going to wipe the brush off with real good, clean it, dry it pretty good. Okay. Then I'm going to go titanium white, French ultramarine. That's it for the French Ultramarine. I'm going to wipe the brush. And then the color that's on there is what I'm going to use. So now I'm just going to take straight titanium white. And like I normally do, I'll go right in. Then you get that real nice kind of misty green look. Right here is big. I'm not even gonna bother over there. I'm just gonna make that a little more dense. There we go. Now I won't clean the brush this time, just wipe it off. Then I'll use our two inch gesso brush, which is normally the workhorse, which really isn't going to be today. And I'm just gonna blend this out. See what kind of pretty look we get. Inside here a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm gonna wipe the brush off, and I'm not gonna clean it. And I'm just gonna tap in. Remember how we've been tapping in the back part of the foliage so it has a foliage shape to it before we add the tree trunks and branches and then the stuff? We're gonna do the same thing. And that'll help kind of solidify this. So we'll hold on to the canvas. And we'll just, remember, tapping like this, using that part of the brush. And you want to tap where the green, where the grass is, um, where the foliage is going to be, where bushes are going to be, where the branches are going to be, that type of thing. You don't want to do and cover all the blue because a lot of that you want to leave as the sky. Here, where it's a lot more brown, it's not going to go as deep. I'm really playing hell with it today. Okay. There we go. That I'm going to leave alone because I'm going to um, use the titanium white with a smaller brush to get in there to kind of flatten that out to make it look more like water. In order to make that perspective correct, the waterfall, which is here, Probably had to go up a quarter inch or so, just so the perspective is correct. I'll see once I start doing it. Okay, so there's that. Now, a lot of times I use the palette knife to put in the branches and the tree trunks and stuff. Today, I'm going to try to change it up a bit. Use the fan brush. Okay, now I'm not using any medium, and I'm probably not going to use any medium for the rest of the day. 
Just lightly tap. I'm not tapping hard. You can hear it, but it's still not hard. And you see all this rough stuff? I want to keep it rough a little bit today. And I don't want all of these the same height. I want them a little all over the place. Just like a regular force would be. And remember, we're going to use a palette knife for the foliage. So that's going to give it its own special kind of unique look to it. Those I'm not going to put it in because those are in the distance. So I don't want much detail showing for those. So I'm going to keep these right about like that. This one I will wash because you never know. Well, I'm going to need this for the white. So I want this to be a lot cleaner. We're actually washing the brush a little more often today than uh, we normally do, but that's okay. Okay, now let's see here. You know, I'm going to use the palette knife for that foliage, so I'm not even going to worry about it. We will go back to the filbert, Payne's Gray, and Van Dyke Brown mixture. Now I'm going to put these higher as soon as I find out where my water is going to be. But just to give me an idea where things are at. There we go. I'm going to put a couple in the water. bit. Break up that water a little bit. Get this a little browner so it can show better with highlights. And these will probably end up being some kind of rocks too. Just keep Okay, that's actually a very nice composition. Step back here a little bit. Okay, that's a nice composition. This looks like it's water. And if this was like Louisiana, it may be. But I am going to make most of this land. And the water will be where you see the water. So I'm going to have the water probably go right up to here. That's where I'm guessing. Again, it's the type of thing where I won't know exactly until I start doing it. I know that sounds like a cop-out. And I do say that on a regular basis, but... It's not a cop-out. You know, the, one of the things that I love about the style that I use is you're not committed to anything until you want to be. The style is very loose and very gestural. And even right now, okay, we're not committed. And here's what I mean. Technically, okay, see the way this is open here? Technically. We could easily have the waterfall come down and go all the way up here, in here, make these rocks, split them up, and have it trickle down into here and make this whole thing water. It's not what I really want to do, but to give you an idea, we're this far into the painting and you still have several options for where the water is going to be. This could be grass and we just have water coming straight down. So one of the things about starting out very loose and then kind of tightening as you go is it gives you a lot more options, a lot more freedom, a lot more a lot more opportunities to create the art you want to create. Okay, so I'm going to get a little fan brush here. The one I have in my palette's a little too big. Okay, so this little one here, and I'm just going to start in the back. A little bit of blue with that, too. That is all green, by the way. Okay. 
for some reason lately I've got a glare when I'm doing videos. Hang on, sorry for the reach. The light over there, I'm thinking that might help. But I've got a glare on this side once in a while. Okay, so. A little bit of blue in there. It's too white. It's too small to be rapids. Let's see here. Okay, I can deal with that. That looks good. Okay, and I'll use my clean this one off and wash it. And then I'll use my regular size fan brush. Now, normally I can use my filbert, flat, whatever, to put in these rocks, I mean, uh, the water, but because of the rocks, the f um, fan brush is gonna give me a little bit more flexibility, a little more control on where I'm going with it. So. I'm gonna start pretty dark first. I'll move in to lighten it up later. And then I got to redefine the, um, the rocks that I'm going to be messing with here a little bit. That first one was just to give me an idea where they're at. And then once I um, put them in here, then I'll redefine their shapes. So they actually look like they're in the water and not I'm already liking the way this is looking. I'm already liking the way this is looking. brush off. I got to get some pure white on there. Little bit of ripples for current. And I'll soften those up and I've shown you how I did that with the brush. It's gonna be more of them. Okay. I like 
that's the way that's looking. Okay, so now we got the little movement in the water, but the way the water looks, my garbage bag, excuse the noise, please. I need to smooth it out. And I'll show you how I do that. I'm taking the same brush, dirty brush, that's fine. Just get the bulky paint out. You don't want any extra paint. Um, and then what you're going to do is we're just going to smooth it. So you're barely going to touch it. That you're going to leave alone. So we'll just take it, barely touch it. Remember, we want to move the paint, not blend it. So, now we can wash this brush. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with a little smaller filbert. A little smaller one, just to have a little more control. Same Van Dyke Brown and Payne's Gray. I'm just gonna redefine. That's all I'm doing, redefine it. And it's really a good idea to have different sizes like I'm doing here. You don't want everything the same size and everything identical. Shapes, you know, can be a little different. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do, once I put the highlights in, then underneath, I'm going to put more little uh, ripples. And that will give the idea of the motion of the water bouncing up against the rocks. Which, in a case like this, with moving water, that's what it would do. There's also some uh, got a stray hair on this brush. There's also this thick white I gotta get rid of. I don't want that in the least. So the first thing we'll do is we will go with our highlights. And for this, I'm just gonna use yellow ochre with a little bit of white. More yellow ochre. You want this to be reasonably thick. Next thing I'm going to do, wipe off my brush, and then I'm going to take a little bit of purple lake, they call it. I'm just going to get shadows. And then I'm going to might possibly use a knife to make a little bit more distinct highlights. I'm not sure yet, but I better be sure in the next couple seconds because it's about due. Yeah, that turns out good. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to use the little knife. You know, I've been finding myself using the palette knife more and more. You got a bunch of different sizes. I got this one I'm going to use the foliage. I got this little one I'm going to use for the uh, highlights here. So you got a bunch of different knives, shapes, sizes, all that other stuff. And uh, the knife just... Just touch. See how that just... Looks 
good to me. Much better. Let's see how those things show up. Yeah, that does show up pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my fan. First thing I'm gonna do is take some glue, get in here. That was too much white. So I'm gonna add some more here in a minute, but first I wanna get these. And this is just showing splashes, which would happen. And I'm not going to smooth these out. Put these just little ticks up. Looks like it's splashing up on the rocks a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here. And one more time, barely, you can see how loosely I'm holding the brush. This little piece right here is still annoying the heck out of me. Now that's better. Sometimes I get in the habit of nitpicking, but I want these things to be pretty good because if I'm going to show people how I do oil paintings and how they possibly can, you know, I got to be pretty good as far as, you know, I got to get it to look the way I'm, I want it to look. Okay, now, you're probably wondering, since we were highlighting these anyway, why didn't I just do all the rocks? And I'm glad you asked. I still have to put grass around here. Leaves, trees, grass here, all that other stuff. If I put in the highlights and everything else and get real good like that, all I'm gonna do is mess them up when I'm putting in everything else. So again, like in the water, I see these rocks, I know where they're at. We'll cover part of it when we put in the grasses and things. And then we already know where they're at, we'll redefine them, then we'll do the highlights. That'll be probably the last thing we do. So let's go. start putting grass in. Now this grass is sap green, lemon yellow. See how I just went right over that? You know, you can only be so careful. You can only be so careful. So you might as well just put your shape down and then redefine. And we'll put some right at the very end over here. There we go. Okay. Now what I do is I'm gonna tap this down just to make it look a little fuller. wipe my brush and then I'll put in a little Payne's gray for dark lines to break that up. This is pure Payne's, pure Payne's gray. 
And it's just to break up the yellow and green. Makes it a little more interesting. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we will redefine those rocks. And we will use a small filbert. That paints gray and Van Dyke brown and we'll reshape them. See the way we do it with the way doing it that way. Now you go over the grass, it looks like the grass is behind it, which is where it's supposed to be. Then down here. Never be afraid to use your artistic license. You think it needs another rock? Put in another rock. Okay, that'll work. Now we are going to highlight all the rocks and throw away another paper towel. Okay. I think for this one, I'm just gonna start with the palette knife and um, go from there. So, I'll put the purple in for the shadows. And then I'll do the palette knife highlights. And we might be able to get that done in couple of steps instead of several. Okay. Once we get those in, then I think I'll do the leafing of the trees. This I'm gonna put very little in. I'm still debating on whether or not I'm gonna do anything. I might just use the brush and make the foliage shape and leave it alone because I do want it to look like it's distant. Okay, so. There we go. Okay. try my best to keep my shoulder and arm out of the way but this damn glare that I've been getting lately I can't promise anything but I'll try my best okay, now for the waterfall area I'm just going to go with this A little thicker paint, John. little higher up at an angle. There we go. What I'm trying to do here is get a nice little area that will hold the water in. should hold the water. Okay, 
Now, the only thing that I'm not thrilled with. Got to change this up a little bit. I gotta make the water come from, like I told you before, about a quarter inch higher. Once I got these rocks, then I decided that I definitely needed that. little bit more there we go okay I like that I apologize for nitpicking here but like I said I want to make this there's no such thing as a perfect painting, but I wanted to make this, in all my paintings, I want to make them as good as I can for you so you can see how to do them. Okay, so let us try what I was thinking about here. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of sap green, And uh, Payne's Gray. There we go. That's all I'm going to do there. I'm going to make that a lot darker and I'm going to leave it dark. It'll show up better once I put the, um, the highlights down with the um, palette knife. So it will show up a lot better. That's what I was looking for. I wanted it just a little, it was a little too sparse. I wanted, even though I was gonna keep it dark because I wanted it to recede, I wanted to be a little fuller, a little richer in color. Okay. Now, this next part we're gonna do is something that, it's a good idea if you just, how am I going to put this? Use the same mind frame that you have in the beginning when we're putting in that really um, thin mixture of the Payne's grain and the sap grain, okay? Have that same mentality to where it's not that you don't care, because you do, but what it is, is you're not going to be fussing with it too much, okay? You don't want to fuss with this. I don't want to say at all, but not too much. You want to let the freedom and the broadness and the bold strokes of a palette knife rule the day. Now, we've got a bunch of different palette knives, okay? You can use any one you want, doesn't matter. I use anything that I think will give me the marks I'm looking for. And I apologize for that being vague, but 
it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna put, I'm, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Okay, I'm just putting in some yellow, lemon yellow, a little bit of the sap green, okay? I don't want this bright yellow to be there. I want this to be just a little brighter green, but I still want this painting to be a little subdued. I don't want anything brighter than those grasses. So you put it at the end of your brush, your brush, your palette knife, and you're gonna touch and kind of move. Okay. On the edges of a stretch canvas, it's a little tougher because they have the um, the stretcher bar and it's rounded. And you want it towards the end of the brush. The br oh my goodness, keep saying the brush, the palette knife. Once you get away from the side, it's going to be a lot easier. And this is going to be in a frame, so that part won't show up anyway. So you don't have to worry about it as much. But the palette knife, ooh, I got it right that time. Look at the expressive strokes it gives you. Like really, I don't know. I've been using the palette knife a lot, palette knife a lot more lately. Just because I like... The marks that I get with it. I'm gonna need some more Windsor Lemon. Tell that right now. I'm gonna show you one of the little things we can do with a palette knife once we have this laid in. We can actually get a little bit more finer detail. Not a ton, but a little bit more. Now, one of the benefits of using the paint I do, the Windsor Newton um, Griffin Elkid line, is you can probably see how thick this paint is. We're not gonna thin it down at all. We're gonna leave it there. And because the Griffin Elkid is a fast drying oil paint, this isn't gonna take forever to dry. As a matter of fact, it'd be about 36 to 48 hours and it'll probably be touch dry. Closer to 48, because this is pretty thick. There. Okay, so here's the thing I was going to, the technique, I guess. And it actually comes out pretty good. Okay, so you've got your thick paint here, you've got your foliage. This Definitely receded into the background. It looks great. You can tell it's, I hope you can tell in the video, but you got the thicker paint I put on here and then you got the thin behind it. So when you're actually viewing this painting, it looks really good. Okay. So now you got this, that's kind of, it looks good the way it is. We can leave it that way if we want it. But one of the things I wanted to experiment a little bit more with is refining the foliage a little bit. So you got the long end and you got the short end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this short end. I'm going to try and manipulate. Touching. And see the way I'm pushing this paint out? That one can use some more paint. Is 
that you're just using the corner here. You're just using these little tapping and moving. And it gives you that real nice foliage look. And you load more paint when there's areas that you think need more paint. If the shape isn't what you're looking for, add a little bit more paint and then manipulate it with the, with the edge of the blade. This one really. There we go. Okay, I actually like that a lot. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our filbert brush We're going to add some bushes with yellow ochre and just a hair of a lemon yellow. Just a hair. I'm going to use the overhand grip. Just, you want to keep the paint thick. And then we'll put it in a little bit of Payne's Gray with it to darken it. set green with it. And like I said, you want the thick, bold paint now. Put a little bit of grasses area. Let's warm this up a little bit. As you can see, I messed up a little bit of our highlights, just like I told you I would. I wasn't sure where I'm where I wanted those bushes and stuff, so it's not too bad. What we'll do is we'll take the small knife and just scrape that off. Up here, the same thing. I'm going to take a tiny brush. we go okay so this is all we got left excuse me take our fan brush that's still dirty what's left of the lemon uh, yellow and sap green we'll just throw the grass in all around our rocks our ledges and stuff like that See, this is one of the reasons why I don't do the, one of the many reasons why I don't do the uh, highlights and stuff until the very end. Just like you saw there, you can mess it up a little bit over there. Over here, you can mess it up a ton because there's so much green to put in. I'm going to do over here. I'm going to put in some flowers. But over here, this is going to be rocks. So it'll split up pretty nice. Okay, so wipe the brush. But we're not going to clean the brush. Where have you heard that before? So, yellow ochre, I'll just start right here. Just be 
putting in our highlights. You want to make sure you get right up to the water's edge. Don't worry if it's a little thick. It's supposed to be. Oil paint. Okay, so I got those. Now I will put in these. I don't know why I keep forgetting to put it down. Okay, wipe this off a little bit and get that purple lake in there. I'll use that for the highlights. I mean for the that's the shadows. You want to go in the opposite direction that your highlights are gonna be. Just looks better. I'm not exactly sure the technical reason, but it looks better. Okay. There you go. Okay, so next thing we do, take out our palette knife start highlighting all these bad boys. And basically, like I said, you're loading a decent amount of paint on your on your knife. You're touching and then you're moving it. And you're letting whatever marks happen for the most part happen. There you go. Oop, just a hair more right here. And there. Okay. Ran out of paper towels. Okay, so got the knife clean. Use my dirty fan brush. What I would do now. Use the purple lake and white. I'm gonna make this really pretty well, purplish color. A little darker. Then I'm going to take just a little bit of white on the tip, hit it the same way. I don't want these to be bright, especially with that water there. But I want them to show. Let's see how that looks on camera. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to take the purple lake. This is going to ground some of my racks. Okay, 
one more thing. We're almost home. Any of you that have stuck around to the end, thank you very much. If you did stick around and you like this, uh, please consider uh, subscribing. And if you do, hit that little bell. I've been really good with uh, every Sunday putting out a new video. I keep wanting to do more. I'm trying to think of what people would like. If you have any ideas of different uh, videos that you would like me to do, please uh, drop it in the comments below and let me know. And uh, I'll do my best to get to it for you. Okay. Just trying to put stuff up here just to make it look like it's into the ground. That's pretty much it. I'll get rid of a couple of them. Go up into the water. Not that thick. There we go. I think I'll look for that for you. I think we will call that a painting. So I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you did, please consider subscribing. And whether you do or not, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and enjoy your work week. Take care, and I'll talk to you next week.